Yeah, g'day and welcome back to my Shelblin project. Now long time viewers are probably just as frustrated as I am that this isn't moving yet. You know, each week I come down here thinking this is going to be the week I get motion and then I work on bits and pieces and feel like I'm making a little bit of progress but the result is not motion. So this video, it's got to be different. This video, I want this machine moving. Make it happen. So what are we trying to achieve here? Well, at this stage, the machine revolution hasn't started yet, so we still expect human commands to be followed by machines. Maybe that'll be different by the time you watch this video. We give a G-code telling the machine to move around. We're aiming for the saddle, in this case, the, the Z-axis of a lathe is the saddle. That's our load. We expect that to move backwards and forth as commanded. That load is driven by a ball screw through a belt reduction from a motor. In this case, it's a three-phase AC servo. Got an encoder on it, which gives a pulse train in relation to its motor speed. Linux CNC closes the position loop. What does that mean? Well, it knows, based on encoder feedback counts, where the axis is. And on the next command, it decides whether you want to accelerate, maintain a constant speed, decelerate, or stay still. And it gives that command in the form of an analog signal. Zero volts means stay still. Increasing voltage to plus 10 means increase up to maximum speed to the right. Minus five volts would be half speed to the left. The drive is only closing a velocity loop. It's looking at this analog signal and trying to use muscle power of the motor to match the, the commanded speed, measuring through this encoder pulse train. Now, for this all to work, I need these cables. These two cables came from the drive and motor manufacturer, so I just had to disassemble them, and I now need to feed them through the machine and reconnect them. Whereas these cables, I need to make them up. First step is depinning a motor connector. I won't bother showing the whole depinning process. It's not that interesting. I've done it before. Well, that's good. I'm getting the hang of these maiden lock connector disassemblies. That one only took me a couple of minutes. This junction box casting, which moves with the saddle, has got a hole in the bottom. And that is where the X-axis motor cable is going to go through. It gets a union. I think it's kind of hilarious that Schaublin use water pipe fittings on an extremely precise machine. But hey, it was good enough for them, good enough for me. And while I'm in here, I can install the cover plate for the end of the ball screw. And also mount the waste scraper. Now I can thread these two through. Actually, maybe I'll tape this up first so I don't make a mess. Right, let's put this back together. Looking from the back. There's my block. Probably best to do the bottom row first, so let's start with the red-white. Right, and next, the matching sockets. Goes together like that. Oops, that's no good, I missed a hole. Okay, here's the motor, here's the conduit, here are the connectors, and here's the nut that I should have put on over the wires before I threaded them through. <sighs> I'm the stupid one now! <laughs> so let's get some more practice at depinning this connector, shall we? Thank you. 
And now the other motor. This time nuts in place first. Now you notice that I'm not actually mechanically installing the motors yet. That's because once I get them connected electrically, I don't want to need the axis moving until I'm actually sure that it's going to move correctly and, and I've got the motors actually under control. Last thing I'd want is a runaway. So at this point I've got power coming into these drivers. I've got the cables for the power to go out to the motor, all prepared and ready to go. I've got the motor's encoder signal coming back to the driver. But the last thing I need is the control signal from my control electronics across to the driver. And for that, they supply this connector. It's a 50 pin connector. And I'm going to need to connect up the analog control signals, plus minus 10 volt DC, that's two, two wires. I need to connect up the encoder, which I'm passing through back to Linux CNC, and anything else, I need to look that up. I think I must be the slowest wiring guy ever, because it took me like, I think three evenings just to make these two cables. Right, well that's now finally the end of the wiring there. Guess it's time to power things up. Right, here we go, first power on. We're e-stopped, which means that the power section of these drivers are deactivated. We should only get logic power. Both are saying nerdy. Servo not ready, power supply not on. Okay, that's good. Now because we're running in speed control mode, I need to change a parameter. Parameter 1.1, .1. long press enter to save. This one is now in speed control mode, so let's do the same here. Right, first thing, with just the brain of the driver powered, I should have the encoder on the motor powered, and hopefully it will also pass that encoder signal through to my Mesa card. Let's have a look. This is a two and a half thousand line encoder. So in quadrature, when I turn this one revolution, it should give me about 10,000 counts. So, oh yeah, that's looking good. Coming around. So that's about one rotation there. Ah, 10,000, yeah, that's looking good. Cool. So that's the Z axis. Let's do the same with the X axis. Okay, now the x-axis motor, so if I rotate that through one turn, this should be encoder number one, and nothing happened, okay. That's not good. So I've got something wrong with my wiring to encoder number one by the looks of it. So now I know the z-encoder is working, the next thing to do is to tie it into Linux CNC, which I've done. So that seems to be working normally. So the encoder feedback's working. Let's activate the power section of the driver. It says ready. Go into jog mode. And now I should be able to jog the motor. Okay. So that means the power section is working as well. The encoder's working and the motor can be jogged. Let's see if I can jog it under Linux CNC control. Okay, so I'm giving a velocity command and I'm not getting a response. Why is that? Well, after a fair bit of head scratching of why I couldn't get any control signal to go out to the motor, uh, I realized that though I've got the power sections of these drivers hardwired through the safety relay, I still need to provide a servo on command. And unfortunately, I'd already made up these cables and hadn't wired that signal in. So I've had to add two more wires to those cables, which looks horrible. But anyway, let's check it out. So now when I put the machine on, this should go into run mode. All right, cool. I should be able to jog the axis now, the Z axis, and it ran away. So that means I've probably got the encoder sense direction back to front. And let's try jogging. Okay, it went in the other direction, but also ran away. So I guess here I now need to get into PID tuning. I looked up a tuning guide for these servos and it says you need the full inertial load reflected into the motor to be able to tune them. So it's time to connect it. Oh 
Okay, here's the moment of truth. Activate the drive with very slow jogging. Put my hand on the e-stop. That was a Z minus move and it went in the wrong direction. Okay, so I need to change the direction. So I think I've got everything connected now and running in the right sense. Now's the hard part is tuning the drive to the motor and Linux CNC to the drive. For that there's a software which came from the drive manufacturer and there are some tools in Linux CNC. Well the PID tuning of these things looks like it's pretty complicated. There's at least like 20 or 30 variables. Unfortunately the software connects through this little micro USB port which is not micro USB. It's RS-232. I do have an RS-232 uh, to USB adapter. It looks like I'm going to have to butcher a micro USB cable, put a 9-pin D-sub on the other, other end of it, and then connect that through into the software that way, hopefully. Luckily I've found a female 9-pin D-sub, so let's get into it. This micrometer stand works quite well for this sort of thing. Right, let's see if these two are going to communicate with each other. Alright, that's pretty unusual that something electrical works first attempt with me. I've got the software working. It's downloaded all of the motor parameters which appear to be correct for the motors connected. That happened automatically. The problem I have is that you've now got dozens and dozens of parameters and I have no idea in which order to start working through and setting to tune this system. There's a very good online tutorial by JB Works Studio, but he set up using step direction, whereas I'm doing analog. And I really don't quite understand how to set up the motor driver first without the control loop of uh, Linux CNC getting in the way. When I converted the Maho, because the drives were already initially matched to the ball screws and the Indramat driver was already set up with all the parameters for specifically those motors, I didn't touch anything. All I had to do was the PID tuning of the position loop back to Linux CNC, but not the velocity tuning within the Indramat. Unfortunately, the manual has such gems as the servo gain is adjusted by multiple loop parameters, position loop, velocity loop, filter, and etc., and they will affect each other. Therefore, the setting of the gain needs to be balanced, adjusted, according to certain rules. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. So it looks like I'm going to have to get onto the Linux CNC forum and get some advice on how I can get the position loop to back off out of the way. So I'm only looking at the servo control loop. But my aim this week was to get some motion. And even if it's just a little bit of weird jerky motion, I have got a wee bit going on there. So I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. Thanks a lot for watching.